Hello everybody, I am the Wasteland Viking and welcome back to Warhammer 40k Gladius. Last time we actually got our second city going and uh, I'm pretty excited for it. It's going to be our, uh, I don't know, like our vehicle slash troops kind of, you know, build it like city I guess. Uh, let's acquire a tile next. We could get our influence high pretty quickly right away. I think I'd rather go over here. We could still get some influence in there. Things like that. So it generates energy and increases loyalty. So that's good. That'll help out with this a little bit. We're going to have to get a Baroque Shrine in here kind of quickly as well. Um, as far as resources, we're doing pretty good and all that fun stuff. So with this one, we have some shelters going and another quarry starting up. Um, what else to do? I mean, you could always do with more loyalty in this city. So we need 50 power for it. So we should be getting it next turn pretty easily. Yeah, um, let's actually get rid of that and then put that in here. I think I am okay with that. Let's get some of our troops moving. Probably closer to up here so that we could get our crypt tech kind of in our ranks. So I think... Yeah, I think that's going to be the next thing to do is our some of our quests in Chapter 2. Should definitely be a priority for us. Atomic Flares increases the armor penetration of Gauss weapons. Cool. Gauss weapons vary in appearance from the rifle-sized flares to the massive heavy Gauss cannon. Unlike more conventional energy weapons, a Gauss projector emits a molecular... Uh, disassembling beam, reducing flesh, bone, and even armor to its cons constituent atoms. That's cool. Uh, research. Uh, ooh, immortal forms. Increases the heal healing of living metal. Nice. That's cool. Increases the growth rate of Necron cities. That, that'll that be cool, but we need to get our loyalty higher before we even do that. Lord's Command and a Triarch Stalker. Those are really cool as well. Dimensional Corridor. I'm debating whether I actually... Actually, no. Cryptek. That's what I said I would do last time, so we're doing Cryptek. Time to slowly move our forces up. This is a bottleneck and it's really annoying actually. Um, skip, skip. Order cities, all right. I'm gonna save on resources, I think. Yeah, I need to do that for the Cryptek. And what you got going on, one more turn for that. And I think I'll get a Baroque Shrine probably going first. Because obviously the higher our population increases, the more likely, I mean, the quicker, the less our loyalty, you know, or the more it lowers. So that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, and then we'll get a hypostyle temple in there. And then probably summoning core as well. Or maybe get some resources kind of underway in here to begin with, and then just go from there, you know? So, yeah, let's skip you and turn. I wouldn't be sending my army up this way. And then we can kind of start... actually getting our army going. I'm going to put these guys in the forest just so that we have some of that 
good protection. Rogue Shrine going in here. Um, that's all we can do right here, right now. We could always obviously acquire more tiles so we have more room for things, which isn't a bad idea. We could do this. Or maybe this. So we can get a summoning core in here and, well, a quarry for sure because of the plus 40%, which is good. I don't know. We'll have to see where things are going to be going. I think I'm going to be getting the, the hypo hydro. The hypo style temple going in there. Next, anyway. Start moving these guys forward. It's going to take some time to get um, our stuff, you know, kind of going underway for that. But uh, that's all right. So I could actually rapid rise this if it's able to do it. I don't know how many, how much influence it's going to cost to do that, but we'll see. Cryptech, hero unit with powerful support abilities. Which is true. They can heal our units. They can uh, do some, a couple of other things. I don't remember what they, what it is. Cryptex bend the forces of the universe to their will, creating impossible technologies and esoteric es weaponry to lay waste to armies and destroy worlds. Time, matter, and space are their playthings as they manipulate the atomic structure of their foes or shift the laws of nature to obliterate all who stand before them. So they have decent armor, lower on the hit points, same morale, all that stuff. Uh, they have six item slots and cargo slots. So some vehicles have cargo slots, but they have their Staff of Light, which does two damage, three attacks, four armor penetration, which is really good. Obviously, accuracy of 87% and range of one. The Staff of Light is both a weapon and a symbol of authority. Its haft is actually a disguised power energy rod and the crist, a fo finely tuned focusing device allowing the wielder to unleash crackling bolts of energy at his foe. So we, he can also get infantry armor, um, static targeting, which increases the accuracy against units and cities. Hero increases damage reduction of enemy units, 50% hero damage reduction and 100% duplicate type cost. I don't know exactly what that means, but uh, yeah, he also has reanimation protocols. And then, yeah, Technomancers, 17% feel no pain at damage reduction. So with whatever damage he takes, 17% of it, or yeah, 17% of it, he, do he doesn't take any of the damage, which is really good. So these are the abilities that we can level him up in and things like that. Resurrection Orb restores the hit points of the target allied unit, which I think is like six or something like that. Uh, Chronometron. Increases damage reduction to the target allied unit. Mind Shackle Scarabs reduces the morale of the target enemy unit. And Polar and Solar Pulse reduces the accuracy of enemy infantry and monstrous creature units in the area. Minus 50% accuracy, so they're blind for one turn. It's really good. Um, and it's cool because all of these are objects you can actually give them in the tabletop. I've always enjoyed this enjoyed it about this game in particular is that you could actually give your heroes and vehicles and things like that what they have on the tabletop you know just things like that it's pretty cool skip and skip uh, order cities okay so it's 121 to do that we could do it next turn and just get it done and over with or we can get the crypt tech right now yeah i think we'll start that skip the city besides that choose um could get these pretty early on. Could also do the nebuloscope. Like improve some of our canoptic workers, increases the production output of hypostyle temples. I think I'll do that. So that's one of the next things I'm definitely gonna get. How much is it for that 50 energy? Energy is a huge thing. I mean, we generate it pretty quickly but obviously uh, it takes time to 
get to a high number and then if you keep using it you just never have enough all the time it's fairly frustrating but that's just how it is All right, so it's growing in population, of course, minus two. So if I, when I do eventually get the influence and if I can s still do it, probably won't be able to. Uh, I think I would still rapid rise the uh, Baroque Shrine just because that's, loyalty has a lot of penalties once it goes negative, to be honest. You guys can move forward. Let's move you guys back. So I can practice that wall that I was talking about. Still skip city. Just saving up on resources, you know. It's important to do. Assigning Canopta constructors to maintain and repair the various long dormant war machines. Um, greatly speeds up their refurbishment. I don't know why my eyes wandered. And I was like, where what, where the hell was I at? I don't know. Uh, let's move you here. Alright, let's start moving these guys up a little bit. I should have actually moved these guys first before I did anything, but that's alright. Mm. Well, it's two turns until we grow again. Yeah, I'll do that. It probably wasn't the right thing to do, but it was something I'd rather keep going. Who increases the influence output? Scarab hives for the canoptic spiders, but we're not going to be having those enough, I don't think, to actually make that happen. This will help out a lot, actually. So I was going to say, we can make our tomb blades better, but we can actually do that once we actually get them, I think, so... I won't worry about it quite yet, even though this would be pretty good to start off with. But we don't even have the temple yet, so I don't want to waste resources on something I don't have. If that makes sense, which I'm, I'm sure it will to most people. Now let's move you up, but not so far up. How far can you move? Oh, just right there. Probably because I didn't move that unit, but that happens all the time. So right, our guys are still kind of close together. Yeah, the city population is growing quite quickly. Yeah, we're already in the negative. One more turn till that happens. That's good. Uh, I'll save on influence. I, I want to wait for my guys to actually go up there to get a hero going, so it's not trying to catch up with the units. Um. Well, I'm surprised that none of our enemies have enemy factions that shown up yet. It worries me a little bit because I thought it would be, you know, I don't know. See, the thing about cities is that they're also always growing. So it's doing the balancing act of having too many Necrons, I guess, in, the, in this case, always happens. And uh, it's always hard to keep that up, especially since we have so much ore. It's not a bad thing, like I said, it's not a bad thing that we have so much ore, but still, it's starting to take a toll. Hmm. 
Yeah. So I think like either we just keep building shelters and baroque shrines, so that never you know goes down or anything like that, or we just keep on ex. I mean, actually expanding city wise doesn't help with population in each city because it is individual. It's not like you know a happiness of a civilization or anything like that. It's not at all like that. But still, I don't know. Part of me just wants to start fighting. I've been doing dilly daddling a lot, but uh, I mean, this will help a lot. Um, it will take some time for the Cryptex delicate mental machinery to recover fully from the long sleep, but we can accelerate the process by exposure to the world outside and to battle. So we need to accumulate research 100, which I think we need to do plus 100, or it's actually 100 that we need, I don't. I think that's what this total is. It's not, we don't need plus 100 science. So that's going to, that would take a long time. We reach level three with the Cryptech. And then we get an Adamantum Weave Vest, which is really good. So you might get, sir. You have lower movement, but that's all right. So you can equip that. Oh yeah, level up. So let's get him the res Resurrection Orb. One more level up, yeah. Um, I think I'll do Mind Shackle Scarabs. It's because you never know. Just gonna wait the, have these guys wait. I think, and then we'll obviously move these guys up. There we go. We got our army going. All right, so no buildings are being constructed or anything. I definitely need to get an ore in here, we have a quarry in there. And then when that research is done, we can start expanding out to the second tier of, uh, what's it called, tiles. Okay, so we got the shrine in there, temple, quarry, Our influence dropped, probably because of the... Huh. I don't know, because we had, what, a plus 24 or something like that before, and now it's plus 19? I don't know. Actually getting shelter is also a pretty good idea. Let's get you over here. And that's as much as I'll do right now. Skip you and turn. All right. But his model is also pretty cool. Let's actually take him out of the city and then I can show you guys. So we'll move our warriors to be next to him, pretty much. And we'll have these guys. Perfect. That's kind of what I was planning. We can't see the front of him, but he has a pretty cool model. You know, his Staff of Light. I like it. Okay, um, let's get this going so our quarries can just happen. I guess I'm just waiting for vehicles because we've got quite a bit of ground units. Maybe another unit of Immortals wouldn't be a bad idea. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Definitely when we get this going, though, I'm going to acquire some more tiles. Clear up some space. Volcanic uh, terrains, I've noticed, have quite a bit of building space. I don't know why or how, but they do. Preliminary excavation. More of the ancient city has been uncovered by the digging slaves who are now turned to restoring the long buried buildings. All right. So city, let's acquire something. Um, it's always good to get something with a little extra ore output and influence output. 
but the three buildings is also pretty nice. Um, let's do that. And then... How far are you on things? Let's just do that. I'm okay with that. Build a shrine over here. We're going to have to have a lot of shrines in our cities. I think that's one of the first things I'll build in this area. It's definitely another shrine, just so our loyalty stays up. Anyway, we need to hunt some bastards down. That was an interesting start already. Oh, I'm not... Okay. From that angle, it looked like I was the two tile, like a tile away for them to have overwatch on me, but that didn't happen. But it's good. I'm alright with that. Fire! And then next turn we can have our Cryptech get in there. Order cities. Ooh. Um. Oh, wait. Oh, provided blood blessing. Right, so they get plus 17% attacks. That's pretty good. And also, we're on an outpost, so we get those bonuses. So the efficient reanimation protocols give us, gives us almost plus one uh, hit point in healing. Which isn't bad. Let's actually get our vehicles a little better. That's nice. Poor bastards in stand change. All right, so let's get him in. He should be able to finish them off. We're pretty dang close. Oh, so he only did a ranged attack. That's weird. I mean, cool, I guess. Let's get you up there. Yeah, it looks like if you're next to the unit that did the, that got experience, you, you get um, like a bonus or like a synergy bonus or something like that. Are we already at level three? The hell? I mean, cool, but that was way quicker than leveling these guys up to three, I tell you what. Um, could increase this, also increase that to eight. So we need to be level 6 for him to get the Solar Pulse. Yeah, let's do some damage reduction, sure. Alright, another Shrine is going there. How much is it for that? 142? Ooh, that's a lot. I can wait. We got three turns. We got roughly about six turns when that will be done, and then it'll push it up to six, I think. So. I think we'll be okay once we get that shrine in there. Obviously getting more ore isn't a bad thing at all, so I think I'll do that. So you will skip for that anyway. And now we can get our Tomb Blades. Which is for that 71, 120. Let's get that going. I'm just rushing these, so rushing things so that we could just quickly get them, you know, which makes sense to do. Tomb blades that are deployed directly into the midst of a world's defenses are often equipped with additional armor panels. Cool. Maybe let's go. Might as well. And then we'll definitely get annihilation barges pretty soon. It's their beast. They're really good. So I'm guessing that they're going to be enslavers up here. Which obviously I am okay with. Yeah, the thing about... Oh. 
Produce 24 energy. Nice. So we got that for free. Um, I forgot what I was going to go with that, actually. Um, yeah, it's like I, I was I was totally ready to say what I was going to say, and all of a sudden something distracted me. It's like, oh, totally gone now. Um, could always do with more influence, it looks like. Yeah, so we got those three going. We're filled up anyway. Let's do this. I should make a tile with like three buildings or whatever that's just all ore, like production. That'd be pretty, that'd be cool. But uh, I don't think that's necessary at the moment either. The Crypt Tech, Pet Proton Tech, is that the name of the guy? I don't know. Is fully recovered and as keen as anyone else to recover Esten's uh, putative webway escape route. Okay. But her instruments show something unusual in a distant tomb. Necrons who respond to no signals, who are mass, mass massacring everything they come across, but they be they beast, man, or necron. Okay, that's weird. So you get that, so he gets plus two armor. It's a passive ability. Oh, it's actually range on self. At least it has a cooldown, it's not like a charge kind of thing. That's what happens a lot with uh, those things. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh-oh. We can take these on. We're fine. Um. I'd rather attack that thing. It doesn't, it's very deadly. Catachin Devils. And we do quite a bit of damage to it, so I th think we're okay for now. We've got plenty of people that have been on hold. So they can overwatch it. Because it only has uh, melee ability. Abilities. Okay. I think I'm just going to save on stuff. Why not? Um, as far as this city goes... Should be alright. Yeah, because by the time the growth happens again, we'll already have the shelters. We're okay. I'll just skip you. I don't feel like needing to rush things. That's not good. And it has infiltrate actually, never mind. Bullshit. Fragments of the Destroyer. We're in chapter three. When we slew our star gods, the Catan, they didn't die easily. After all, they were fundamental parts of the universe who had achieved science oh uh, achieved sentience. Of course they achieved science, I mean like they're, you know, star gods, duh. Anyway, they couldn't be truly annihilated, only as atomished and trapped, lest they recolesque, -co and some Catan left a curse at the moment of their death, like La Landu Gore's flare, a uh, disease that drives so many of our warriors to madness. Okay. The destroyer cults, which have sprung up on the peripheries of our cities, too, are another reflection of the Catan's curse. These Nihilites are drawn from the best of us. Okay? Immortals, Lichgard, and Lords, and in their madness seek only the death of all life. But whilst we can communicate with our local cults, this maddened army is incom incommunicated in incom incommunicate and kills isolated Necrons alongside the living. We must stop them if we can. The rebel Necrons have formed into an army led by a formidable lord. Let us tackle them carefully when we are ready. Destroy the rebel Necron army and then we get 100 energy, influence, and ore. It's really good. 
and I remember doing this quest, if I remember right, there that formidable lord or whatever that they were talking about is a uh, destroyer lord. So he's pretty beefy and will hurt a lot. So let's do that on you. And attack. Oh, because that was his action, so. We'll see what comes of the rest of it, I guess. Okay. Ooh. Ah. The Devil Lair. We'll have to destroy that. I think, or they'll keep, like, reproducing it or something. Sweet. But they had a negative thing towards uh, morale, I believe, because that's a monstrous creature. They actually have you wait. You wait. Oh. Hold position. Actually. Yeah. Actually, we could have you hold until healed. Now just hold. Never mind. I believe that's everybody. Order cities. Yeah, just waiting. I mean, just trying to get my city infrastructure in a good spot. There's so many of them. We'll have to back off, for sure. I personally don't feel ready to get, you know, to take them on. Probably until we get vehicles, I, I should be fine, like annihilation barges and things like that. Anyway, this arcane device allows the Tomb Blades pilot to track his prey through different dimensions, leaving them no place to hide. That's pretty neat. Uh, let's have you go down here. Retreat! Not in a coward's way, mind you. But still, just get out of their, you know, area of influence and then maybe they'll bugger off, I don't know. They, they hurt. Um, especially for our warriors, they really hurt. Yeah, save. Choose research. Extra infantry armor is always good. It's got heavy destroyers, actually. So I know we're going to need those for that uh, army. Which is actually over here. Alright. Didn't run away, but it's... It's still there. Um... Let's actually have some protection around these guys. These in order to heal automatically, you have to not move or shoot or attack or anything like that. So you have to be very careful of what you do when you're trying to recover. Sweet. They sound really cool. Also, they look like the Droidicas from Star Wars. Very similar, and also obviously very similar to the I wouldn't mind having a couple of them anyway. Um Could always get another Lord as well. Or a hero. Whether Cryptek or Lord. I think I'd rather research Destroyer Lord and get that, honestly, next instead of getting another hero like that. Those hybrids are interesting. And these things can hover. Um, let's look a little bit at their stats. So 8 armor, because of the thing that we got. Uh, 8 health, they don't have a whole lot of hit points. They are fast. They move at 5. Um, they have twin linked Gauss Blasters. Uh, 2 damage. So since there are 2 of them each, and they're, you know, 2 each with 2, obviously that's 4. So they get 4 attacks instead. Armor Penetration of 3. Accuracy of 10, which is really good. Range 2. 
Gauss scales the minimum damage with the hit point of the target unit. Atomic flares it increases the armor penetration. Rapid fire increases the attacks at half range and also increases the accuracy. So they're really good fighting uh, infiltrating units. They also have this called Jink. Uh, they get minus 33% accuracy, but it adds 33% range damage reduction. So it's all right. Turbo boost increases the movement for one turn by two. Um, yeah, jet bike. The unit can move over water and ignores the penalties of rivers and wire weed. So that's obviously really good. Living metal, they get two hit points each. We can give them, well, we have given them the nebuloscope and the uh, shield vein. So I'm pretty happy with that. Shit, we've got the influence. I don't mind if I use that. There we go. Uh, going that in that direction would be smart. Or we can just gather our forces down here and take on that army. Yeah. I mean, that's what I have to do next anyway, so might as well. Yeah, I think I need to start doing the quests a little bit more often. Not more efficiently, but, you know, just more often. Oh, right. Because they've already moved. Um, let's move you ahead. Move you right there. I know the plan that I had with the Necron Warriors up front and then the Immortals after that. I'm trying to keep up with that file, that ranking system. For me, it's, you know, not difficult, but it's, you know, just... I don't pay attention to it very well. Um, nah. Skip. So that's increased population. Produce shelters in the Broke Shrine. So where are you at then? Alright, so you got 7 loyalty, that's good. So that'll help with our population buffer a little bit. And you got the shelter and the shrine should be done in a little bit. I'd rather rush this, to be honest. I mean, I think, actually no, we're okay as far as loyalty is concerned. Not a huge issue. So I'll actually have these guys go here. Like I said, shooting through trees, which obviously can't happen. So not going to be doing that. Should never split the party, but I am. Blasphemy of the highest order. There we go. This city's population is going through the frickin' roof. I already have two shelters. I'll have to get a third one. Fairly quickly. I mean, six turns. So it's alright. Um, yeah, growth at plus six. Per turn. So yeah, I think... When this tile is done, I'm just going to do a shelter there. Because all of these that I'm building here are very important. So we'll just keep those. So if I remember right, these uh, neophyte hybrids are a gene stealer cult kind of thing. I don't remember 100%. But they're relevant for that kind of stuff. Let's actually have this scout out a little bit. So that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, they are scouting unit. So I shall have them do their job like they're supposed to be doing. Sometimes it's hard to tell. I mean, obviously here it's easy to tell, but like when it's a lot of the, you know, dust or whatever, it tends to do that. Like move over other tiles and it's hard to tell exactly what's going on with that. Anyway, um, I'm actually going to leave the episode here. It's been about 40 minutes. So next time we are going to be taking on the Rebel Necron army and hopefully get some 
heavy destroyers. Um, maybe get an, an annihilation barge as well, just to get a lot of vehicles and a stronger unit. You know, infantry unit just to blast people. That'll be really good to have. And things like that. We got our crypt tech. Leveled him up to three very quickly. Like literally one attack, he was up level three, um, which I'm okay with that. But it's, I've I've had some games where it took him a little bit longer to level, but that's all right. Um, and yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm really enjoying this series. Um, it's nice to play a game in the 40k universe without playing the tabletop game. I guess I really enjoy the tabletop game, but uh, sometimes sitting for ninth edition is short in time quite a bit it's a lot easier to follow like like, like i said last couple episodes so my brother and i play tested it and uh for our game to learn it i mean it's a lot like ninth edition with a few extra things or and some things taken away just depends on what's going on but um uh, we were able to finish a game in like three hours we didn't play i think it was a thousand point game so it wasn't like huge or anything like that but uh it was just to test it out and also it was my first time playing necron so is like sure let's uh let's start kind of small but not super small like 500 or even 750 um that one's it's it's still small for us we're not we don't like the smaller point games um but anyway so uh but yeah it only took us like three hours but anyway so if we're playing a game like this where it's different but you still are in the universe it's, it's a lot of fun to do um just things like that. Anyway, uh, leave some comments down below about, uh, I don't know, your, your, how about this? Your first Warhammer army, whether it was also whether it's 40k or Age of Sigmar, whichever one you want to do, or any of the things for it, uh, Kill Team, uh, Warcry, or Necromunda. Just let me know about. I'm starting to get a little bit more into the skirmish games. A little bit. I've seen. I'm seeing some reviews about them. Stuff like that. It looked pretty cool. Um, and just different rules and stuff like that. So, uh, just tell me your first armies and things like that. And also, um, what armies you have now. If you've, if you've grown from it or if you're starting out and just staying with one or you've always stuck with one. Which, from what I've seen, not a lot of people just stick with one army for their whole entire 40, you know, their 40k hobby. So, but anyway, so let me know. And also please like and subscribe. Uh, that'll help out a lot. It helped me out a lot, and also I'd really, really appreciate it. And we're we're stopping on turn sixty nine. Hey. Anyway, so um, and also please like this video. Um, I'm gonna share this video, um, with your forty k buddies, um, friends, family, whatever you want to do. Um, and also, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. I'll see you next video. Until then, take care. Bye bye.